On one level, many questions are aimed towards, how can I be free from this and that? Another level you are asking, how can I bind myself to something or somebody? You must decide, what is the highest value in your life, freedom or bondage? Please, I would like to hear that word, huh? Oh, freedom! But if you are free, you feel lost. If, some, if you go into the mountains and you're totally free, that is, nobody around, nothing around, you're just in the empty space of the mountains, you don't feel free, you think you're lost. So to handle freedom, it needs a certain clarity and strength. Most people cannot handle freedom. They are always trying to bind, my, bind themselves, but only talking, mouthing freedom all the time. If you really set them free, they will suffer immensely. Human beings are right now like this. A caged bird, if you keep a bird caged for a long period of time, and then one day you took off the door of the cage, still the bird won't fly. From inside it will protest that it's not free, but it will not fly. Human condition is just that. For all other creatures, nature has drawn two lines within which they have to live and die and that's what they do. But only for human beings, there's only bottom line, there's no top line and that's what they're suffering. If their life was also fixed like every other creature's life, they wouldn't be stressed, they wouldn't be anxious, they wouldn't be struggling how to handle their own intelligence. And that is what you're seeking unknowingly. You may seek it in the form of relationships, you may seek it in the form of profession, you may seek it in the form of, form of nationality, ethnicity, community. God, heaven, hell, all you're trying to do is draw an artificial line which does not exist. Because freedom needs courage. Freedom needs a certain madness. <laughs> if you're very sane, you cannot be free because you will go between the two lines of logic. To be free, it takes lot of strength. First of all, what needs to happen if you want to be free is... Do you understand that all human experience has a chemical basis to it? Hello? What you call as joy is one kind of chemistry, misery is another kind of chemistry, stress is one kind of chemistry, anxiety another kind of chemistry, agony one kind of chemistry, ecstasy another kind of chemistry, at least ecstasy you know it's another kind of chemistry. You're a chemical soup. The question is only are you a great soup or a lousy soup? Yes or no? Right now, if you have a chemistry of blissfulness, <laughs> if you close your eyes, it's fantastic, if you open your eyes, it's fantastic, if somebody is here, it's fantastic, nobody is here, it's very fantastic. Yes or no? But you have a lousy chemistry. If you look at them, if they smile at you, it's nice, not fantastic. If they look at you like this, suddenly it's a problem. If these people are happening just the way you want, your chemistry is reasonably balanced, if they do something that you don't like, boom, it goes somewhere else. So essentially, you have not looked at this mechanism, what is the basis of this, how it functions, how I can make it function at its highest level. Right now, let's say you really blissed out like me. Do you care who is around, who is not around? If they're around, it's fantastic. They're gone, fantastic. Because your experience of life is no more determined by what you have and what you don't have, whether it's people or things or food or this or that, it is not determined by that. Once your way of being is not determined by anything outside of you, then there is no such thing as loneliness. If you don't learn how to handle this aloneness, you have not learned anything about life. This is the most beautiful thing.
the most beautiful thing about life is nobody can get here, it's just my space.